There are now just 336 days until the 2020 presidential election. And although the Democrats still don't know who their contender will be, they do know who their contender won't be. <laughs> Joe Sestak and Steve Bullock have announced that they're both dropping out of the race. And I know, this is huge. <laughs> yeah. Because now it means all the other Democrats can pick up their supporter. <laughs> but <laughs> even with those two dropping out, there are still 16 candidates left in this race. Because, you see, every time a Democrat quits, more Democrats jump in. <laughs> yeah, getting rid of Democratic candidates is like shaving an old man's back hair. It grows back <laughs> twice as thick. <laughs> I owed someone money. It was a thing. <laughs> and the newest hair on the back of the Democratic Party is uh, none other than Michael Bloomberg, for former mayor of New York and world's richest Lord of the Rings extra. <laughs> After entering the race only last week, he's already making a big impression. There's another big shakeup this morning in the Democratic presidential race. After months of speculation, former New York mayor and billionaire Michael Bloomberg made it official over the weekend. He has thrown his hat into the 2020 race. After months of speculation, the former New York mayor announcing his candidacy in a video Sunday, a part of a $35 million media blitz. He launched his campaign with the single largest political advertising buy in U.S. history, spending more than $30 million on ads that touted his record as mayor of New York. Wow. Michael Bloomberg has already bought more TV ads in one week than anyone in history. I guess those are the perks of being a billionaire, but he's got to be careful because TV ads are a great way for getting noticed, but too many TV ads can turn people against you. Yeah. Like, the first time I saw that Cars for Kids ad, I thought it was cute. <laughs> And now, my life's mission is to destroy that organization. <laughs> Every day. Hey, 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 ah! <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. It's a good idea. Kids should be given cars, but it's on TV all the time. <laughs> and that's what could happen with Bloomberg, because 30 million, like, if you're in, in one of the states that he's flooding with the ads, that's all you're gonna see on TV. Hi, I'm Michael Bloomberg. Change the channel. It's still me, Michael Bloomberg. <laughs> Change the channel. There's something new this month at Subway. It's me, Michael Bloomberg. <laughs> so, while Bloomberg is making news for how much he's spending on ads, Pete Buttigieg, mayor of South Bend, Indiana, and kid who always asks for more homework, is getting attention <laughs> for what he's saying in his ads. Pete Buttigieg has a new kind of position or an ad this weekend that was airing in Iowa about, um, about education. Listen. I believe we should move to make college affordable for everybody. There are some voices saying, well, that, that doesn't count unless you go even further, unless it's free even for, for the kids and millionaires. But I only want to make promises that we can keep. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, a Bernie Sanders supporter, slamming the new Iowa frontrunner, tweeting, this is a GOP talking point used to dismantle public systems, and it's sad to see a Dem candidate adopt it. Ooh, Pete, you in trouble. <laughs> This is an interesting one. Pete Buttigieg says that he supports free public college, but it shouldn't apply to rich people's kids. And in response, rich people said, what the f is a public college? <laughs> is that like a public toilet? I think I've heard of those. <laughs> no, but jokes aside, like, this ad is getting a lot of backlash, right? Because Buttigieg has basically drawn criticism from the progressive wing of his party, because they argue if the government provides a service, the service should be available to all of its citizens. Right? It's the same way a public library doesn't ask how rich you are before they let you in to masturbate. It's a public library. <laughs> Everyone can masturbate. That's what it's there for. <laughs> now, despite the backlash, Buttigieg's campaign is still steadily on the rise. Meanwhile, Kamala Harris's campaign is headed in the opposite direction. While campaigning here, too, Senator Kamala Harris presenting herself as a choice to beat President Trump. The New York Times reports her campaign is in turmoil, obtaining a resignation letter from a top Harris aide who wrote, this is my third presidential campaign, and I have never seen an organization treat its staff so poorly. That aide, according to the Times, jumping onto Mayor Michael Bloomberg's team. Bloomberg! <laughs> I guess those ads worked on one person. <laughs> But yes, Kamala Harris's campaign is struggling. And some say uh, it's because she doesn't have a clear message. Others say it's because she put her sister in charge of the campaign. And that makes sense. You should never mix business and family, unless you're a plumber, in which case you have to involve family. 
Yeah, there's a little tip for you guys. If a plumbing company name doesn't end in and sons <laughs> or and brothers, you can't trust them. <laughs> Something bad happened in that family. You stay away. <laughs> now, there is one Democrat who seems immune to campaign gaffes, and that's Joe Biden. He's still the favorite nationally, and he's even bought himself a sweet new ride. Today in Iowa, the Joe Biden campaign bus on an eight-day, 18-county tour of the first caucus state, trying to rev up his lagging poll numbers. His new ride, branded in Biden speak, as the No Malarkey Tour, he says to contrast President Trump. He is calling it the No Malarkey Bus Tour. The bus tour comes as Joe Biden went viral this weekend, when he was caught nibbling on his wife Jill's finger on stage during a campaign stop. <laughs> Joe, no! No, Joe. Bad Joe. No biting. Don't make me get the spray bottle, Joe. Stop that. <laughs> Look, I actually, I actually think this was a cute moment between a couple, right? But, but it would be cuter if it was at home instead of in the middle of a rally. <laughs> that makes it a little bit weird. Like nibbling your wife's fingers. It's all about context. <laughs> and also, is, is Joe Biden's slogan really gonna be no malarkey? That's your slogan? Yes, we can. Make America great again. No malarkey? <laughs> what does that word even mean? <laughs> like, it sounds like the dish your vegan cousin serves at Thanksgiving, you know? <laughs> it's not turkey, it's malarkey. <laughs> the main ingredient is mold. Namaste.